112 to 104, the final score as the Toronto Raptors dropped the Miami Heat to a game under 500, moved to two games above 500 themselves with a big win. The season series now at 2 to 1 mm-hmm. for the Raptors versus the Heat. Welcome into Raptors today, Keel Augustine, Sherm Hamilton, minus Jonesy feeling under the weather. So, of course, we've got him under protocol. He won't be around us for a little <laughs> bit. But let's talk about it first off. You want to talk about OG Ananobi. That's the big story right now. So, Sherm, we'll talk about this in a big conversation with this Toronto Raptors team has been their shot spectrum, where are they getting their shots from, especially with Pascal Siakam out. Big night, 32-10, and 10, double-double for OG. And he's kind of the guy that they're leaning on offensively, not known for his ball handling and ability to create for himself. Where have you seen him grow the most over this last recent stretch with a huge eight-game stretch? I think OG has, has shown over the course of the season that defensively he's going to be there every single game. And he's declared it. He wants to be considered one of the best defensive players in the league. So he has no no shame in saying that to the to everybody in the NBA. So that means players are going to go at him to yeah. prove that he's not that guy. Offensively, OG has figured out that he has impact on so many levels. I mean, this is a guy who can score in the three-point line. He can score in the mid-range. He can score on the block. He can sp- score off of second-chance opportunities off the glass. So his ability to put the ball in the basket – has been getting better because of opportunity and guys are out of the lineup so he's been able to to do the things that he hasn't been able to do before and and when you talk about him scoring 32 points it's not based on him just jacking up shots yeah. it was an efficient 32 points 13 of 18 from the floor so he was making the most of his opportunities and the other side of that is when you couple it with his ability to rebound his ability to defend now you got the complete picture, right? Yeah, now you yeah, got a guy yeah. who can just impact the game on so many levels with opportunity. The question I feel is when Pascal comes back, when yeah. Pressure comes back, when Gary Trent Jr. comes back, how does OG maintain this level of aggression offensively? When, as you said, the shot spectrum is going to change now because other people are going to be involved. Yeah, you got to give him props, too, because this is also a bad night for Jimmy Butler, the other marquee player on the court. And it was, for most of the game, a lot of times the responsibility of OG to guard there him you go. and to run the offense. There you go. Okay, so on the other side of things, big conversation in Raptor land, Scotty Barnes, yeah. sophomore slump. People want to talk about it. Fred's come to his defense. Nick Nurse has t- come to his defense. Thad Young has come to his defense. He came to his own defense last night with the 19 points. What did you make of uh, his bounce back performance and still, you know, getting the points, but the ability to also orchestrate things with the help of Fred? Yeah, I'm going to come to his defense as well. I think, and I said this uh, the last time we did this show, people become prisoners of the moment. It, you, you can't get locked in. This guy has a body of work that has shown us early in his career that he has significant skills. I don't know of any great player that hasn't gone through a slump, hasn't gone through a phase where it's just not working out. And I think the idea of focusing on Scotty from an offensive perspective solely and deciding whether or not he's had impact based on that number in the, in the column yep. is the wrong way to go. I mean, Scotty has, as you mentioned, the ability to assist, to make plays, to defend, to rebound, to do other things to help his team win. And especially when you're talking about a young player, a second-year player in the league, do you expect him to have it figured out already? Do you expect him to know exactly what to do every time on the floor? No. Especially without key guys on, in the lineup that alleviated some of the pressure off of him. So I just feel like people need to just pump the brakes a bit and understand it's a long season and guys are going to go through this where they're not going to look like themselves at times. They might not make the shots you expect them to make. And it might be an extended period of time. But they're good enough, and Scotty's good enough. He understands who he is. Nick Nurse isn't going to pull the cord on him. No, he didn't. His teammates aren't going to pull the cord. Forty-two minutes, hundred <laughs> percent. Because again, that right column in the stat sheet that determines how much you've scored is not the only factor deciding whether or not you've helped your team or you're a positive impact on the floor. So. All the fans that are looking at the numbers and saying he's not scoring, well, he scored 19 last night. Good for him because he can score. But Scotty is way bigger than just scoring, and that's what you have to appreciate about a young guy who's figuring out his way through the league. The mind for the game is more than just putting the ball in the basket. Yeah, and he was playing through injury, too. You talk about it. He tweaked his ankle again, but we saw Nick Nurse relying on him, leaving him in the game. Let's talk about who else Nick Nurse can rely on because this is an opportunity with a lot of guys out opportunities come. Yeah. Delano, of course, had a, a great opportunity. Injured now. Took we'll, advantage of it, he too. He did take advantage. Yeah. We're going to wait to see what the report is from the from the doctors. But right now, who stood out to you over this stretch at last night taking advantage of the minutes available? And, and this is going to be a person that's not based on stats 
although last night he had a pretty good game, it's Thad Young. Yeah. You know, this is a guy who might not have played when the full roster was around, might have gotten a few minutes, but he was always ready to play. And I'm just happy that we're seeing Thad Young in an extended period of time on the floor do all the things that we've known he can do. He could do because we've seen him play in the past. We've seen him do damage. And now we're seeing him do it at a different level in a different way. And, you know, the interesting thing about that young is when you use him as a point forward, he's a very good passer. And you're seeing him at the elbow and he's making right hand and left handed passes to cutters that go into the basket. He just has this this understanding of I'm a vet. I've been around this league. I don't need to try things that I, I can't do. I know my lane, and I know how I fit into this team. And just because I'm being given more opportunities, it doesn't mean I have to be irresponsible with those opportunities. And he's done a great job filling the void, great on the glass, great defensively and offensively. When you're getting stuff from him, it's within the structure and the framework of the team. So I I think Thad Young has been excellent. I mean, we can mention other guys. Chris Boucher has been really, really good as well. Consistent too. Absolutely, and he's been a game changer coming off the bench in a lot of respects. But I just enjoy what Thad Young is doing from the perspective of if you didn't know Thad Young, you're getting a chance to see a lot of what he was really good at when he was more athletic, he was younger, and he had more mobility, but he still has the mind to figure out how to be effective even at this advanced stage of his career. Reminiscent, Some of the decisions he's making reminiscent of Mark Gasol when he played at the top of the key, just yeah. picking off guys 100%. left, right, and center. Right now we hand you over to the coach of the Toronto Raptors, Nick Nurse. In OG's offensive game, he was at the rim. He made some shots. Yep. He drove it. He kicked it. Like what? Yep. Well, there, yeah, there's, yeah, there's exactly right what we're talking about, and that's you know just again getting in the situation, and and um, you know we did we did work on a few things pre-game, you know, of, of addressing that late late game a little bit with him, and and um, and it's always a little tricky because you don't know how they're going to match up, etc. So it was they were moving it around a little bit too, so we had to kind of keep adjusting to that. But now he just. You know, he, he wanted the ball, he controlled it, he made moves, he made pass outs, you know, all, all the stuff you got to do when you're when you're the go-to guy. You, you were talking before the game about wanting Scotty to get to the rim more. He did it in the second half. In the first half, it looked like he was taking what the defense was giving him, knocked down a few jump shots. Does that sort of help him from a confidence standpoint early in the game? Yeah, I mean, I again, I just want him to, to, to be aggressive, and, and you're right, he... He came out feeling really good about his his jump shot, obviously, and they're they're giving him space. Um, but you're right. I, I liked how he worked his way, you know, worked his way inside there a lot late too. Did some good cutting and found some, you know, some seams in the zone. You know, they were playing quite a bit of zone. He found some seams there at the basket. Yeah, he had, he had good good reads. How much do you think having Fred back helps him as well? It looks like those two have played pretty well off of each other. In the yeah, I mean, I, I think it helps. I mean, Fred obviously is uh, helping organize a lot out there. That certainly is a big part of what's going on in a game like this. You know, who's who's spacing where, who's setting, who's who's you know handling all that stuff, and it's and it's good because again, I think with Scotty playing uh, a good portion of point guard while Fred is out. Now we've got some more things we can do when Scotty handles and get Fred off the ball. And I thought Fred had a really good game. He called, he, he found a couple sets on his own there where he got OG, you know, kind of kind of curling down the lane and, and, and he just kind of kept going to that. And, and they had trouble until they went small and then they were, you know, they were switching it. So we couldn't quite take advantage of that anymore. But those were great, great reads and calls by him. The Toronto Raptors have their own recipe for success. They're not going to shoot you out the building, but they are going to turn you over and they are going to hit the glass. There was a 21 to nothing run in the third quarter that kind of shifted this game. What changed for this group on the floor? I think when, when you're talking about coming out at halftime, and you know this, that first few minutes of the third quarter is where you need to either extend your lead yeah. or get back in the game. And I thought Fred had an urgency about that moment. And a lot of times people say watching an NBA game, you know, you – you only have to watch the last few minutes and you can understand what happened. I don't agree with that. You look at the third quarter, how Fred approached it, it was about winning the game there, winning that part of the game to set them up for the end of the game. And Fred was excellent in the third quarter. He had 13 points, he was 4 of 8 from the floor, he had 4 assists, and he was just orchestrating, as Nick Nurse said, 
orchestrating the offense, making sure that the right people had the right had the ball at the right time in the right places, and just keeping the whole team consistently fluid. I, I think you know one of the questions were how does Fred help? Well, he helps in a big way by setting things up and making sure everybody's in position. But the beauty about Fred and how he approaches the game to me is that he's got a great understanding of when it's their time and when it's my time. Yeah. And as a point guard, and you know this, sometimes it's a, it's a tough balance to strike, figuring that out, especially when you're down and you don't want to get into hero ball, but you know you can do some things. He does a great job at, at finding that, that proper balance between that. And I thought in the third quarter, he said, look, I got to score. I got to put some points on the board. Now you're coming at me? Now I can find teammates and I can make plays for everybody else. And he just kept, I feel, Miami off balance with his his ability to break them down, whether it was a pass or the score in that third quarter. And other guys chipped in. Thad Young was good. OG Ananobi was very good. There were multiple guys, but Fred really orchestrated a great third quarter that put them in position to finish that game. And one would ask, where did he learn to play like that? Where did he learn that presence and that balance? Well, on the other side of the ball, Kyle Lowry, second game back in Toronto. Lots was made of the matchup. Fred said he doesn't like playing against the guy, but it was a huge matchup for both those guys. And how similar are those two players? Because we saw at a point, Koch kind of tried to take over and orchestrate a comeback for his heat side. Yeah, you could see similarities in the approach during the game. Look, Fred has always been a leader. Even when Kyle was here, he was a leader. And I've always said, good leaders understand when to follow. Yep. And Fred knew that Kyle was a leader in his own right, had done more than him in this league. So the, the intellectual person that Fred is, he says, I'm going to learn from him. I'm going to figure out what's made him successful. I'm going to be a student. And But that doesn't mean that Fred wasn't a leader in those moments. He was definitely a leader. He was always a leader. And I think when you see them match up and you see them play, you, you understand that both these guys – They've taken stuff from each other, and it's a fun matchup. They're family. They're bonded for life. All right, well, let's hand you off to Fred Van Vliet and Scotty Barnes post game. Last week you were here, you said you wanted OG to be meaner defensively. Do you want to be meaner offensively like you might have been tonight? I don't know. Yeah, I don't think he. I don't know if he can be mean, but if he can do what he did tonight, uh, we'll be all right. So it's about time, man. I think that's what everybody been waiting on. So you know, string them together. Now the next step is just consistency, and you know that's I think what we're all chasing to be is great on every night, every other night basis. So um, he's been incredible. Um, it's great to see and just you know be there to keep encouraging them and keep pumping them with confidence because um, we're gonna need that you know for the rest of the year. I know your night didn't start as well as you probably wanted it, but it ended. I think you made six of your last seven, six of your last eight shots or something like that. Was that just getting the rest off and the timing back and that kind of stuff? Or yeah, I, mean, I still feel so uh, just, you know, when you're sick and you wake up and you feel better than the day before, you think you're 100%. So it took all about three minutes before I was, realized I wasn't. Yep. Uh, 100% yet, but I'm um, just happy to be back playing and just, you know, that was a lot of fun tonight. It was a competitive game. The, you know, the Heat is, are always fun to play against. They do a lot of the same things we do. They, you know, we have tremendous respect for them. So, um, you know, it was just a fun night and, you know, th- you know, we were able to come out with the win. What have your, since the game you played in Oklahoma City, what have those days been like? Oh, I mean, it's probably been a... F- Full week now. Um, you know, I wasn't feeling the greatest in the Houston game. Travel, obviously, you know, it gets worse and worse. And got myself ready to play in the OKC, and that was probably, you know, the last of the energy that I had left. So all my tests came back negative. I was happy about that. But uh, just, I think everyone I've talked to in the world is just just the worst cold that we've had, right? And nobody's really had a cold in two years because we've been wearing masks. So it was my turn and, you know, I hope that everybody can avoid it because it wasn't fun. But um, hopefully, you know, the worst is behind me and just happy to be back with the group. Scott, it looked like you were taking what the defense was giving you early in the game. Took those jumpers, knocked down a few of them early. How much does that help from a confidence standpoint to see ball go to the net early in the game like that? Uh, I feel like I always really try to start the game aggressive. Uh, but, it, of course, it feels really good when some shots start to fall. Uh, give you more energy, more juice. Of, you know, so I feel like at, at, it's a great feeling to start the game making shots, being able to get things going. Uh, I feel like it's been better. It felt really good. Is it a, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Is it the type of thing where if you see one or two fall, you'll 
you'll keep on going with it, and if not, it's like time to find something else. Or no, I I feel like I'm when I no matter what the solution is, I'm always keep trying to play harder, try to get it back at the next play. Just keep trying to stay aggressive, stay confident, keep trying to do what I work on. I feel like I work on my game a lot, so everybody always try to tell me to stay confident, be who I am on the floor, try to bring energy. Uh, shots not falling, try to find a different way to do things, but eventually today it was it was falling. Scotty, when you're waiting that kind of take take a jumper or a drive, are you more so focused on your defender and how much space he's giving you, or are you more so looking at the second line of defense when you make that decision? I don't really know. I'm just playing the game. If I see somebody in the gap really heavy, I, I'm just making reads. If I see somebody drawing from the corner, I'm trying to find different things. Whatever a different defense is giving me, it's really what I'm trying to. That's what I'm taking. Um, most of the time, I'm really trying to get to the rim, really be aggressive, start off there, and then try to get everything going from there. Stay aggressive. Hold on. Stay hold, on hold on. Hold on. How old is Scotty? He's got to be 21 now. Did you have that kind of composure. focus, composure, that type of mentality at 21? I, I think you knew me when I was that age. so you think you could I, I wanted that. you to say it. I didn't want to I, say it for you. I may not have had it at 31. <laughs> so I'm thankful that I'm getting some of it you, now. Man. Scotty, I mean, that's the next level. I mean, I, at 21, I had none of that ever. Yeah. In my life at 21. Yeah, very gracious too. Handles questions that he feels you know may not have hit the the, the mark perfectly. Hundred yeah, uh, percent. Honestly, great kid. Yeah. Um, excited to see what comes up next for him. But right now, let's talk about some fashion. Scotty out okay. there with a nice puff. Yeah. Uh, cream puff. But we're gonna talk about Raptors fashion. Some new content and uh, some new items dropped right now. You see OG Ananobi modeling the brand new that's OVO a good Raptors collab. Yeah, definitely. You can, I can see you rocking that. Yeah, that's yeah, clean. yeah. That's that's still. Old enough for me to wear. Okay, okay. I got the purple <laughs> joint from last run. Then the new Know Yourself OVO inspired jersey. Okay. I don't have those triceps. I need to get back in the gym. Yes, you do. Winter time. This one, this is the look, though, yeah, for yeah, me yeah. personally. This and and the, the guy look. wearing it is the man, too. I mean, Damon Stoudemire, come on. Shouts out to the Mighty Mouse and the Varsity OVO. Yeah, that's a good look. That jacket's tight. Shout out to our guy Tristan Forbes, who was courtside rocking that, making me feel real envious. And there he is with the Stop white hating, version. man. Hey, man, I need one of those. Tristan, hook me up. Uh, there's the white version. And um, the suit works, too, for me, honestly. Are we, are we releasing the OVO suit? The OVO draft suit? Shout out to Drake. Is that, that a real thing? No, 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 no. Oh, I was about to say, I might be we, on that. We also have the collab with Mitchell and Ness. Shout out to the super fan, Nav Batia, rocking the alternate. And this is the Mitchell and Ness jersey inspired by the classic. Those are tight. I like I like all those looks. It's funny how like people really hated on the original Raptors uniform. I know, right? And now, now it's like, it goes down to what's the old is new. Time. What yeah. old is new. So let's talk about fashion for a quick second, Sherm. Um, who is your Raptors lead style guy? This is, you know, it's subjective. I'm very, I'm more of a classic dresser when it yeah. comes to dressing up. So, so I'm, no Gary Trent. No, well, I can appreciate Gary Trent. <laughs> it's just because when you, when you look at style, you say, could I rock it? Yeah. I can't rock 1% of what Gary Trent wears because he's got that swag. Yeah. I don't have that. Yeah, like a stirrups inspired outfit. He can, he can pull it off. He's got that. I would say this. I, I think, you know, I like the way Fred dresses. He has that kind of... That that young enough look, but he kind of has a, a cleaner look to what he does. So I would say Fred would be on at the top of my list. Uh, but guys, creatively, guys do things that I just can't do. Yeah. So I kind of stay out of those lanes. I think the good middle ground is precious. He's doing both. I yeah. think he's real stylish, but also kind of classic. But do remember, you can get the brand new Raptors collections all at realsports.ca, downstairs at Real Sports Apparel at the Scotiabank Arena and online. But right now, i got to hand you off to the vertical threat for the Toronto Raptors. That's Christian Coloco. And, of course, another guy getting an opportunity off the bench. That's Juancho Hernan Gomez. Christian, what did you make of the game today? Just give me your overall thoughts on the performance. Obviously, you guys came out to win. Heat is a very tough yeah. team to play. As you know, <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, we, we played a really good game, you know, we were, I think we were down by like six at halftime, we came back, we kind of responded good, I think we had like a 22 0 run, so it really helped us, and we just, you know, we just played as a team, and we got some stops, and, you know, we, we got the win, so that's the most important. All right, Wancho, so far you've been getting some solid minutes, obviously the injury list is long, but what's been your takeaways on the court so far? I mean, I'm just so happy to play, uh, I just try to help the team as much as I can, uh, try to um, do my job, do my role, um, 
try to bring the energy. And I'm just happy we get the win. Uh, so on the next one, uh, long season, a lot of games, in and out guys, uh, we gotta keep it rolling. So you talked to me about just the importance of like your game in terms of like, yeah, you're gonna look for your shot, but it's also important to find your teammates as well. Do you mind going into that and like your mentality on like, you know, your passing ability? Because Coach Nick Nurse also brought it up too. I mean, some guys are gonna, the shots are gonna be there. Some games, uh, we gotta keep passing the ball. Um, I gotta read whatever the game it is. Uh, if I got, if I see somebody open, I'm gonna pass the ball. If I feel like I can shoot, I will, I will shoot it. Um, just stay aggressive. Um, today was a different day. I mean, I didn't get any shot, but I tried my best on defense and tried to bring the energy. Uh, it's gonna be games like that, and it's gonna be games that you make uh, some shots. Uh, just keep it going. Uh, and then when you see your teammates like OG and Anobi just having a great game on both sides of the ball, you know, how happy are you for him? A lot. I mean, um, he got to be our leader. If his skills is not on the game or he's not available, um, Freddy too, Scotty. I mean, we got a lot of guys kind of step up and get the win for us. But uh, we we got to do it collectively. Uh, we a team, and that's really important. Uh, Todd make a great job today. Um, everybody who step on the court uh, got a big impact. That was Savannah Hamilton stealing a moment with Juancho Hernan Gomez, a Spanish national standout. Talking of national teams right now, we got to give some props to the senior men's team who qualified for the 2023 World Cup of Basketball. And also Shea Gilgis-Alexander, who had a huge night last night with the game winner balling. But now it's time to set expectations because Aaron Best and the gang, no NBA players in the house, were able to close out that 10-0 record as they, as they are now, I think, ranked 15th in the world. But now the expectations and focus shifts to the world. World Cup. Sherm, what are your expectations for a group when we don't actually know that the final roster is going to be for this team? Yeah, first of all, I think it's it's heartbreaking to think that the group of guys that you've talked about that have been in and out and sacrificed and dedicated their time in season, out of season to play and to help this team get to this point. The unfortunate reality is the majority of them aren't going to be there yep. to be able to experience it. It's, it's just a heartbreaking feeling, understanding the work it takes to get there. But I feel like with this roster, now that they have Alpha dogs, Jamal Murray, yep. Shea Gilgis Alexander, mm. two guys who are bred leaders. Yep. With the people around them now, this is a podium team. This is a top team in the world. I have high expectations of this group. Number one, the talent. But number two, they've been through some battles together internationally. They have that game and those experiences now together. And I think now they're at the point where the leaders are mature enough to take them to the next step. And I think the players around them are quality, world-class players as well. So I have podium expectations from this group. And and it's, it's not that it's failure if they don't do it, but the expectation with the talent is who's better than our country right now or who would compete with our country, rather, other than the U.S., yeah. talent-wise. Yeah. We've got to be on in that conversation now. So I, I feel like it's it's – it's not far-reaching to say this team is a medal team at any world event that they qualify. Yeah, we've we waited for a while. A couple of years ago, we thought the time was then, but the time seems to be now. Things have come together. And shouts out to Delano Banton, who had a huge oh, yeah. summer with the national team. For Unfortunately sure. for him, he had a big opportunity with this group over the last little stretch, but we're still waiting to hear what the doctors have to say about him. But our show gave him a new nickname. Shouts out to Jake <laughs> LaRue and the crew. And uh, the good folks at Raptors Reddit found it. Found it Quite humorous. Banton of the Opera was the nickname after his huge game against the Pistons, 27 points. And, um, and of course, you got to throw Drake in the meme when you're doing it. They said, no, we would rather hear a Star Wars-inspired nickname, yeah. the Banton Menace. You a Star Wars guy? Sure? No, no, I'm not. Okay, so it's not resonating with you. Not at all. What nickname are you giving him? I, know I, I don't have one. I, I mean... I know he's from Rexdale. I grew up in Malton, and we're right across the 427 from each other. So it's usually a man from Rex. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, the, the lingo is, the man's from Rex. The man from Toronto, the man that's from Rex. Rexdale. 100%. I would have went with Buju. I think that's like, you know, my regular head. the guy's name. Listen, it's a, na it's a natural That's jump. already a legitimate artist's name. One of the greatest reggae artists ever. We got friends named Buju. Not Banton. No. But so don't I, tea for name. All right, okay, my bad, my bad, my bad. All right, that does it for that one. Um, now, so 
Banton is a part of that group, so shouts out to the Canadian national team as yep, they continue to sure. progress towards hopefully meddling at the 2023 FIBA World Cup. But that does it for us here on Raptors Today. I want to thank everyone for joining in. If you got anything to say, of course, throw it up on Reddit. I know Jake will be monitoring the feeds. But the Toronto Raptors have their next matchup Saturday against the Atlanta Hawks at 6 p.m. And you can catch that on the Sportsnet Family of Networks, Sportsnet 590, the fan radio. We'll have the radio call. And, of course, just check your, your, your guide for the Sportsnet channel that's got the game. That does it for us here inside Scotiabank Arena. I'm Akil Agassi, and that's Sherm Hamilton. Yes, sir. And we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Let's do it again. All right, let's do it again.